Hey guys, I am with my overall best friend and genius in the collimating industry. Allegedly. Allegedly, yes. If you want to know anything about collimation, you talk to this guy. And if he's not around, I'll try to do a job as well as I can for him. But Howie Gladder makes the best collimators on the planet, bar none. Allegedly. And a genius who just patented a brand new item called the Paralyzer that puts to shame any other inch and a quarter reducer on the market. Shame, Absolutely. Shame. So how he's how he's gonna do a little demonstration of all his new products and remember they're available on cameraconcepts.com or collimator.com. Okay. Gotcha. Well we have a problem uh, us amateur astronomers and the problem is the wiggle and skew of the slip fit cylindrical adapters and accessories that we use for attaching eye pieces, collimators, camera nose pieces at the focal plate. So I've uh, attempted to correct that problem uh, with a new method uh, and the first application of this method is to a new product known as the Paralyzer. It's a one, in, one and a quarter inch to two inch adapter. And um, it utilizes the paralyzer principle, um, which changes the contact between the optical accessory and the draw tube or cylindrical holder to one of a contact between two parallel straight edges in a cylinder. It's like dropping a cylinder into a V-block between two parallel rails. Uh, maybe it can be seen. I have here an unanodized paralyzer with an eyepiece in it in a focuser. And you may be able to see, I'll orient it best this way, that there's a space under the eyepiece barrel, which, which material has been taken away, leaving two lines of contact between the eyepiece and the barrel. And when I clamp the eyepiece in there, it ain't going nowhere. There ain't no wiggle. So we applied this principle, and I'll take this away, to both surfaces of the paralyzer adapter, the outer surface and the inner surface. So when you use the paralyzer in your draw tube, insert a collimator or an eyepiece or a camera adapter and clamp it, it ensures that the optical axis of the accessory is parallel to the axis of the draw tube. Yes. This is important especially for imaging where if the camera cocks, the chip plane or film plane will go out of parallel with the image plane and you won't have sharp stars all over. This is also important for collimators. In the collimator, there's a one and a quarter inch collimator being used in the adapter. If the collimator were to tip, you know it would throw off all of your collimation settings. So the paralyzer is designed to eliminate the wiggle and ensure parallelism. Okay, that's our latest product and available uh, at Camera Concepts or for myself at collimator.com. Okay, um, I showed this collimator. It's typical of all my uh, collimators. It has an accessory aperture stop, one millimeter pinhole, which reduces the beam down from its native laser diode elongated fuzzy edge beam to a tiny circular point. You think we can uh, show the beam impact? Sure. Okay. Here's a typical laser diode and laser collimator beam impact. We're going to show it on paper. And as you can see, it's elongated, and a bit fuzzy edge. Sorry if I'm shaking a bit. Okay, I'll turn it off and I'll install this one millimeter pinhole stop. It's an attachment that comes with all of my collimators. And we'll take a look at the beam impact again. It's a tiny circular spot. And this aids in precision 
and making single beam adjustments. Okay, my collimators, um, they come in different sizes. It's a two inch only, as well as the one and a quarter inch. There are combination size collimators, which fit both. We have attachments for doing bar load collimation, uh, for projecting uh, uh, reticle patterns to enable um, centering up optics and making adjustments by uh, symmetry of the pattern on the edge of the optics. And in addition to our collimation equipment, we have um, we have binocular nebula filters, very effective for viewing emission nebula. They uh, have come with individual um, passband um, printouts showing how effective they are, over 90% in the passband. And they attach to binocular eye cups right there. This is another item of ours. Um, we carry a line of uh, green laser pointers, excellent for teaching uh, celestial geography. And uh, we have different types. This one has a push-on, push-off switch, which is very good for finder use, mounting the laser on the telescope for use as a finder. For that purpose, I uh, produce a series of brackets for mounting the laser pointer adjustably on the telescope. This is the plane bracket. We mount to any tube or flat surface. We bend the feet to fit and uh, supply foam uh, tape, high strength adhesive foam tape. And I also make brackets that fit the bases for many popular finders. This drops into a Telrad base, has the adjustments to aim the laser pointer. And here's one. This clamps onto a red dot style. Uh, base, short male dovetail, about five eighths of an inch wide. And the last product I have to show you on the table here, these are just some components of it, is a sling replacement kit that I developed for Obsessions and other telescopes. The sling is hung from a low friction linear bearing, um, and uh, when the mirror moves, the sling will move with it. We can actually uh, take a look at this, perhaps, in my telescope. Is it uh, possible to move over there? Yeah. Okay. You can best see in the back. Here's the uh, hardened stainless steel shafts with the bearing that the sling is supported from. You have them on both sides. And I'll show you now, when I adjust the mirror, watch the, the bearing that carries the uh, stainless steel wire rope sling. When I move the mirror forward, the bearing travels with the mirror, and this means that the sling is always hanging straight down on the mirror and is incapable of pulling backward or forward on the edge of the mirror, which induces astigmatism. It was the main thing that the sling was intended to uh, eliminate. So that's our sling kit. Uh, we make it for all sizes of obsessions and uh, for ATM jobs. If you're building your own and using a sling, just contact us and we can arrange to uh, uh, produce a sling that'll fit your telescope exactly. And that's about it for, for now, most of the time. Um, oh, this is a good opportunity to show bar of pollination. Um, Actually, what we have here is we're making the primary adjustment. And what we should do is look at the focus line. Go around, come around. So this way. Yeah, look at the side cut out open. Oh. We're projecting the shadow of the collimation target on the primary mirror back up to the Barlow device, which is a, a tube block in this case. And we're doing the primary adjustment by centering up the shadow around the aperture on the tube lug. And I'll show you something very interesting about this, which demonstrates 
that Barlow's collimation is insensitive to any errors caused by collimator misalignment. I'll loosen the collimator and wiggle it around to simulate misalignment of the collimator. And as you can see, the beam is moving all around, but the shadow, which indicates the collimation adjustment of the primary, is not moving very much at all. And uh, this is a nice Barlow accessory that's available uh, from me and at Camera Concepts. And uh, it uh, enables you to adjust the primary from the back of the scope and see the adjustment as you're making it. Okay, that'll be it.